Welcome to Final Fantasy XIV, your first day, where the eternal cataloging goes on and on. Last time, we made it through the base story and unlocks of Heaven's Ward, but even a marching army takes breaks to keep morale up. For that reason, it's time for us to go through all of the Disciple of Hand and Land unlocks, features, and roadblocks through the entire Heaven's Ward arc including through the patch content. Which, for that reason, if you're planning on leveling these, I highly recommend sticking around to the end for one very specific yet expansive feature. There's quite a lot to get through, so let's not delay and get right to work. A new expansion means new class quests for everything, but let's start with Gatherers. The reward for the base quests, introductions to the storylines with no real work involved, give a lot of crystals. The regent you'll be using in 90% of all your crafting going forward, so as a crafter, these are already benefiting you a lot. More importantly though, are the survival manuals. In the course of the 50-60 to 60 leveling curve, doing all class quests, three or at worst Four of these is enough to get all three crafters to level 60. That's right, you get three of these per gatherer, but with normal gathering curves, you'll need one and maybe a little extra per gatherer to get into Stormblood gathering levels. All three gathering lines will lead us over into Ishgard, two of them even sitting in the bar next to each other, and much like job quests, these give skills of some kind for better or worse. However, instead of five quests, we only have four of them, 53, 55, 58, and 60. This spread applies to crafters as well, but without the same quest skill rewards. Another thing that benefits both crafters and gatherers and is the most important unlock of this expansion is collectibles over near the leaf counter in the foundation. It's technically three systems in one. Crafters will get into later. Fisher is a toggle button. The size of the fish, which is random beyond high quality fish being bigger, is what determines the collectability of a fish and gatherers of botanist and miner have an entire fancy window built for collections, but you can put the skills on your hotbars too. This NPC on the side in Mordona is for players who have leftovers from the old system and you don't have to worry about it, while everyone else visits the main counter for some very good rewards, buyable with Scripps, the new currency for collectibles. These gear pieces are really good for players progressing through the curve without needing to spend a gill, just time on collectibles. Which, collectibles are traded in for scripts, and the better the collectible is, the more rewards you get out of them. Just be ready to also chug cordials if you want to gather scripts fast. And quick aside, Moidona isn't the only place you can turn in collectibles, all three main towns also have a turn-in for collectibles in their marketplaces. In our gathering log is now rarefied items with a little box icon in the name which denotes them as a collectible at a glance. Some are always available like this cotton, but the good ones are only in unspoiled nodes. Creating good collectibles as a botanist and miner is a balancing act. We have three different collection actions that use up Gather Attempts, or Integrity as it is called here. Each has their own specific use, but we also have a buffing skill. For 200 GP we can buff our next collection action thanks to Scrutiny. We also have some proc rates for special buffs and Collector's Standard which is... completely worthless! Okay, it's not worthless. But it's not something you can ever count on. At best, I mark it at a 5% proc rate in level 80 gear on these level 55 Heavensward nodes. Potentially you get an extra collectible, 
but otherwise do not rely on collector standard at all. There's also a lot more to this system, but that about covers it for a surface level overview. It's pretty simple at the end of the day, just realize the most important bit, stats for gatherers have started to matter a lot more thanks to collectibles. Head back to town after collecting and submit your haul for a few scripts and EXP. The 100% uptime items are pretty worthless. Few scripts and essentially no EXP. So let's just see how much more rarefied unspoiled collectibles are worth. For one, unspoiled nodes have been super buffed from this point on. They're not for 3 hours a day, they are now AM and PM for 2 hours, so a node at 8 AM will also appear at 8 PM. Secondly, yes they're still limited, but they have base integrity of 6, which means you have much more leeway with making good collectibles. Though, quantity beats out quality if you are struggling. Thirdly, due to the limitation, it's a lot less GP intensive. You can spend all of your GP on this one node where the 100% uptide nodes, you didn't have the GP for every node. Finally, look at those rewards! Once we're through the next section and have a decent set of gear, making these rarefied items both high in quality and quantity comes super efficient for very little work. If you want to be forced on a schedule, in exchange for a high reward and scripts, this is really good. And you may want to consider this due to something at level cap we'll come back to. Otherwise, you're back on the normal grind. Remember to put on your special survivor manuals for huge EXP boosts, turn on Truth of Mountains and Forest for unspoiled node access, and get ready to throw all of your GP at gather rate buffs. If you didn't boost your gear up like I am not doing, gather rates are pretty low until you get geared up into some Heaven's Word gear. Also, you may find a map or two in your gathering, maybe worth doing yourself or at least selling on the market if you're not on the free trial. Leaves are also still a very good option for crafters and gatherers, but not the best anymore. Just wait. We're in for a treat at the end of the video, but until that point, you can at least consider doing leaves, and some of the temple leaves are actually really good. While attempting to do your class quests at level, you may run into a few... issues. Since we can actually see numbers with botany and mining, let's continue to focus on them. The Heavensward quests love making you gather items that are hidden. Which, if you forgot, hidden items means the item only appears in random nodes or needs special skills to reveal the item. Additionally, the stats you need are Heaven's Word stats, really high if you didn't upgrade after hitting level 50. Using preparation to reveal the requirement for high quality, we need 321 perception, and even after buying the top and the hat to bump my stats, I'm still 11 points short. I even did some light melding, meld entirely into perception or do what I did and also grab the boots too from the jeweled crozier. These upgrades are huge and yet you still need several of them to catch up to Heaven's Word stats. I warned you last gather video, the end game stat curve is just that huge. If you want to be cheap, but put in a lot of work, level up your crafters and gear them first, then craft your gathering gear yourself. It's cheaper on the guild side, but it's going to take a lot more time. But even after you have the gear, you still will have low gather rates and probably just a 1% high quality rate if you didn't boost your gear even further. This first quest might take a lot of effort and a lot of GP spent on buffing your gather rates. If you didn't buy the tools too, the tool rewards will be huge. 
the issues you experienced with having to gather with low raids just start to completely disappear at that point. The level 55 quest, without upgrading my gear beyond what the quests give, I have a much higher chance to gather and a high quality. Every point matters when your stats are this low, and going from a 1% high quality chance to 5% is much more useful than it would otherwise be. Context matters. While waiting for GP to regen and nodes that don't have hidden items, grab some of the crystals for when you go over to crafting. You have to rotate nodes anyway, so you might as well get something for your effort. And the more crystals you get, the better off you will be because you need a lot for future crafting. Fishing, meanwhile, has the easy life. Don't want to suffer? Just go ocean fishing. You'll gain four or five levels in a single trip and get a large handful of scripts for just barely any effort at all. It may even help with the class quests, but you'll still want that gear first, which the level 53 quest is over here in the map by this tree, and I highly, highly recommend turning on your collection ability and spam all GP into patience. There are two fish here that can be used as collectibles. Sorcerer fish, which I always recommend turning into collectibles, and ice picks, the fish we came here for, for the quest. This sounds like an issue, but it's not at all. If you say no to a fish being a collectible, it automatically becomes the same quality it would have been otherwise. So this 8.9 elm fish is no quality. While I believe anything over 10 ilms is high quality. So when I say no to this 12 ilm fish, it comes out as a high quality ice pick. The versatile lures we got all the way back when we unlocked ocean fishing is what I used for this quest. But you might consider going to buy some stonefly nymphs in town just to get it over with. Though I don't know how the catch rates compare. And you really do want to get these quests done for a number of reasons. For one, all of the different types of fishing. If you're really into fishing, there's a ton of potential fishing spots that you just can't use without doing the quests first. More importantly though, is Patience 2 at level 60. This all but guarantees your hooked fish is high quality every single time. Patience 2 is extremely powerful and all but completely replaces Patience 1, but doesn't entirely. When trying to mooch or even double mooch a high quality fish, Patience 2 is definitely required. This also marks the point where you really want to upgrade your accessories and GP builds. For collectibles as a botanist and miner, and Patience 2 alone for Fisher, GP is going to start bleeding you dry. Though, getting back to Botanist and Miner, the 58 and 60 skill rewards are also extremely expensive to use, but no less useful if you are desperate to get high quality rewards. Like if, oh, I don't know, a quest node is unspoiled? Like the level 60 quest. Both level 60 quests are from unspoiled nodes at 8 and 12. And the expensive single gather attempt high quality boosts can be a huge help to ensure you don't need to come back here four or five times. This is a good way to show off the skill isn't useless, but also it can be extremely annoying depending on your luck. And we have one more important unlock for gatherers though. Back in Mordona, we have the unlock for Ethereal Reduction. Not all collectibles we gather with fish up are meant to be turned into Rowena or any other NPC. Some of them are specifically there to be ethereally reduced into crystals for crafting. And Aether Sand of one of like 50 different types nowadays. Ethereal reduction rewards depend on how good of a collectible you made. The better the collectible, the higher the reward. However, these items are all but in a new type of node exclusively. 
ephemeral nodes. Ephemeral nodes are like unspoiled nodes in that they are on a timer. However, this timer is much longer, typically four hours, and isn't just one node within the time limit. Ephemeral nodes are meant to be constantly farmed within the four hour window, like normal nodes. And the log will tell you the timers once you collect the items once. Unless you're working on level cap stuff though, Aether Sands you find will probably be fairly worthless these days, but it could sell for a little bit of gill. For now, the crystals and clusters you get from reduction are what you benefit from most. But let's take a break from gatherers to finally talk about the crafting side. By not crafting anything, except crafting death. We're going to be a samurai crafter of pain because we have a third beast tribe to unlock with the Moogles. Notice how the quest here is read until I swap to Samurai, and it even appears on the map when I am a class or job that can't take the quest. This quest isn't blue, but it should be. The fact it appears even when on a crafter denotes that it is a storyline quest. There are tons of side stories in the game, most of which do not have any related unlocks. But in this case, following this red icon around the map will guide us through the Palm Guard side story. We do need Flight to finish off this chain of quests, though you really should have Flight in every zone already. Ending on the quest, Trouble in Zenith. But this long line of quests isn't all we need to do. After finishing the Palm Guard line, we are left with no red quest markers in the Churning Mists. So let's head back to Four Tom's Manor, and now there are two quest lines that have appeared in front of the manor. But the one we want to follow, for our purposes here, is Into the Mists. For this line, we have to help the Dragoons of Ishgard gain a foothold in the Mists, ending on the quest Laying the First Brick. This quest is a Finally, the one that unlocks the Moogle Beast Tribe. Head back to Mogholm for the newly appeared blue quest, which is the actual official unlock. And thank you stars, you don't have to do any more Moogle side quests. Moogles are like the Ixels, except 10 times better. They're in the same section of the craft log, but even in a Realm Reborn gear, they're super easy to do for the first few levels of the tribe. You also don't need some stupid pair of special gloves to do the crafting. Your gear is what you use. Most importantly though, is you can tell a Moogle to piss off Koopo. The rewards are huge. To start, there's a vendor with lots of different options. Gear to buy with Gil so you can keep up if you fall behind in later tiers of the tribe, including tools. There's also the Tribe Currency Exchange with the Adept Gear, which is what we saw when we were at the Script Vendor. This is a much more efficient and cheaper way to access that gear, and makes for a really good base set for next expansion if you follow the normal curve. For now though is EXP. If you didn't notice, the unlock quest for the Tribe gave me 1.3 million EXP. That is more than the EXP needed to hit level 52. Even though Moogles also have the level sync function like the other two tribes. Thirdly, even though we only get three quests a day, at 52 each one is worth 400k EXP. And because Moogles start at rank 1, your first day's reputation will be enough to automatically rank you up to rank 2 get an extra level up's worth of EXP from that quest, and get three more Moogle quests for that rank up. I got four levels just from unlocking the tribe and doing the dailies on that day. The grind to unlock it is definitely worth it. But on a less happy note, we have the class quests. Like the gatherers, we are given a bunch of commercial manuals to boost the EXP of crafts we do, and a handful of crystals. These quests are all over the place, some in Ishgard, some never touch Ishgard, and in general, 
Normal crafting for Heaven's Word is awful. A lot of annoying to craft materials were using a lot of enemy drops even compared to other crafting tiers. If you did not level your retainers by now, get working on them. They are needed for Heaven's Word. You will run into the same issue with gathering, but much worse here due to how stat reliant crafting is. Completing crafts will be extremely difficult, and high quality near impossible without investing at least a full set of no quality gear in the markets. You might as well if you don't do the normal leveling path, because once again, all crafts of this expansion's quest need to be high quality. A no quality item will not do. To help with this is a special unlock at level 55 though. Beloved of the Builder in Mordona. This is the quote unquote job stone for crafting classes. You can make three of your crafters be specialists, which give huge stat buffs that even at level 80 are no less beneficial. Especially because of the plus 15 CP. Whether you believe it or not, one CP still makes or breaks a rotation at level cap. Every point truly does matter, and 15 is a lot of CP. The big issue here is you only get 3 stones. You can swap your specialists around, but there's a weekly limit to how many times you can swap, and you need a large handful of scripts to buy more of the stones to do the swaps. Make sure to pick the three most used crafters of yours to get the stones first, and then go from there. Also, certain recipes are specialist locked, but that's more of a worry for level cap, and not right now. Just keep that in mind and in the back of your head until you try to craft something specialist locked. But back in Mordona, we also have another unlock at level 60 for a Disciple of Hand or Land. Go West Young Craftsman unlocks us Idleshire as a script vendor, which is going to be an extremely useful vendor for us thanks to the second quest that comes after, Arms Wide Open. Here we have Zloe's Not So Wondrous Splendors, our first custom delivery vendor. A bunch of items out in the world you might have seen even in this video are specifically there for Zloe turn-ins. Botanist and Miner have their own set of items, Fisher has its own set of items, and the crafters all share a set of items. You get 12 custom deliveries a week and 6 per vendor once you have multiple unlocked vendors. The stuff for Zloe's crafting is over near the script vendors. Problem is, in this crappy gear, I can't even spam progress skills to complete it. I do not have the stats. Custom deliveries do expect some decent amount of stats, which I do not have without first buying some gear in Heaven's Word. But the rewards are worth it. Gil and tons of scripts and even some EXP. And those scripts are going to be spent extremely quickly. Let's talk a bit more on the script vendor for a minute. It has all the usual stuff, but we also have a certain other section for crafters. We have Master Recipes. These are the Master Books. In A Realm Reborn, Books 1 and 2 were a difficult grind, but beyond, it's all a script grind. The first books, Books 3 and 4, are 100 scripts per book or 1,600 scripts for all books for just Heaven's Word. Now, each new expansion may lower the costs of books beyond this point, but the Stormblood books, books 5 and 6, are 300 scripts each, and definitely the Shadowbringers books will get discounted as books 7 and 8 are a massive 1,400 scripts each. One current tier book costs about as much as every single Heaven's Word book combined. That's big. There's books like these for gatherers too, books of folklore, which you may have seen in the Gather Log. Books of folklore are no less expansive and have all of the endgame materials 
for the special crafts and more within the master books. So get ready to grind a lot of scripts if you want to have everything available. For crafters, once you've spent all of your Zloe allowances, you'll have to just go to the collectible section of your crafting log and craft these collectibles. Every 10 points of quality is one point of collectability. So a collectability of 220 like the Dissolvent wants, at a minimum, is 2,200 points of quality. These items always craft as collectibles, so no worries on that front, but it just shows the amount of effort you will need to put in to continue the normal line of progress, and why Retain is being leveled is so needed in this expansion. And I do mean need, because the level 58 craft quests require you to have book 3 of each crafter. Master books were made required, so get ready to get grinding, and you will want to, because at least for me, the Stormblood stuff is quite worth the effort. Or, you know, just throw Gil at the market board. You can always cheat your way through the class quests, that's still an option. But you may want to just skip the curve entirely, get Stormblood gear, then come back for all this work, and you can easily do that with our final unlock, which you'll need to progress the story much further than we did within the canon of this series. 3.3, the finale for Heavensward's main story, is the trigger to open up the Firmament, Ishgardian Restoration. This is the biggest thing. The main event is over, the rebuilding efforts are finished on almost every server, if not every server by the time this video comes out, but they still accept donations and there's so much worth to do here. Let's follow through the path laid out for us by the quest itself. The main board here was for when the rebuilding was underway. No use now, but maybe a use in the future if we get another restoration thing. Next is the Craft a Collectible Vendor and the Kubo of Fortune Vendor. Doing your highest level collectible for the Firmament on each class will give you a stamp and 5 stamps is 1 scratch off ticket. Talk to the appraiser a second time to have the crafts added to your craft log. Ignore everything but grade 4 stuff really. Each ranked season, yes this was competitive, had its own season of stuff to collect and craft. With it done, I do not know if anything beyond grade 4 would ever be created. Unlikely, but who knows. But for the purposes of this video, focus on grade 4. Next is the Sky Builder Script Vendor. Sky Builder Scripts are gained from Firmament activities. You can get mounts, glamour gear, materia, so many things. There's a lot of stuff to sort through, but pick what you like as you start getting scripts. Some of this stuff is extremely expensive, but fancy. Now, all of these crafts needed special materials called Approved Sky Builders Blanks. The next stall is all about the diadem the source of all of those special materials, and a cool-ass bazooka. Enemies in here are passive, so it's super chill gathering experience. The final kiosk is all about points. Points are rewarded to show how good you have done in the firmament. There are rewards for hitting point thresholds like 100,000, or 500,000. In all 11 crafters and gatherers for 5.5 million points total. Yes, there is a reward for that, and it is insane. But also when seasons were a thing, this was an in-game way to track your progress per day, and also a button to the lodestone leaderboard section. Season 1 Saint of the Firmament representing. There's also an entire quest line here to do, and a ton of side quests. I recommend you do them because among the unlocks is another of Rowena's vendors and a custom delivery NPC for Shadowbringers crafting. Do the quests that pop up, even if you can't quite benefit from them yet. But let's go back to the diadem. This is a huge map with tons of people potentially all gathering alongside you. There's a lot of little special notes to make here. For one, the bazooka. 
The gauge is default up the left, but if you select the duty tab in HUD layout, you can move it. Then get gathering. Every gather will slowly build up the gauge and I highly recommend just turning on quick gather and never turning it off in here for a reason I'll go into in a minute. When a bar has been charged up, point at an enemy and hit the duty action button to shoot. It's not like limit break, each individual bar is an individual use of the bazooka. But I want to pay special attention on the duty action button. If this is your first time seeing it, be sure to set a keybind for duty action that you can access during battle. You will be needing duty action for battle, so get that set now. Back to the gathering, there are two quote unquote lines of nodes that work on cycles, an inside and an outside line. Here, Botanist runs two lines that run counterclockwise around the entire map. If I was running Miner, I would run clockwise around the map to follow the lines. And you do want to follow the motion due to node bonuses and proper spacing of the nodes. Which direction you go depended on the update. Every update to the diadem would swap which direction you go, so this could change in future if they keep using the diadem. Keep that in mind. Once back outside, talk to the appraiser to approve items for use for selling or crafting for yourself. Nodes in the diadem are all 5 or 10 gathers per node, as you can only appraise in groups of 5, so the 1 and 4 items I have are worthless to me. Always gather in sets of 5, which is why you want to always have quick gather on. It will guarantee that every node at least always gives you enough to appraise. But yeah, that's a basic overview. There is so much more I could go over, and this place is going to be your quickest ticket to level 80 crafting and gathering. I made 100 of the level 20 craft on my carpenter, not even the level 40 craft, and gained 20 levels. And I did it while macro crafting and playing Persona. After making the macro, I would just hit F12 and go back to Persona. It is that easy to level, but don't neglect your learning process. There's still a lot of personal learning you have to do to be an effective crafter. But I believe that covers everything of note for Heaven's Word crafting and gathering. I hope you all enjoyed the break, especially since it ended with one of my favorite pieces of gathering content in the game. But that unlock was after completing 3.3. That means we have to go back to battle. Back to the story. Back to war to reach that point. Thanks for watching this episode of Final Fantasy XIV, your first day. There was quite a bit to go through, but we got through it all. Hope you found something new to enjoy or a way around a roadblock. But we gotta go back to the biggest roadblock of all, the story. Next time, we cover through all of the content after completing 3.0 and through the patches. Take care and may the power of Ananid Hogs lay waste to your enemies. And an extra special thanks to all of my patrons over on Patreon, with an extra extra special thanks to Arya Deva, Amen Al Khatib, sorry if I messed that one up, Ethan, Ethan Olson, Evan, Jamie Cotterell, Kyle Steinhauser, Melfi, and Valor LLC. If you'd like to join the names on screen, the link is down in the description. Thanks for watching, and have a good day.